Majority Leader. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I ask for unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days in which to revise and extend their remarks and to submit extraneous material into the record. Without objection. So ordered. Thank you. Madam Speaker, I rise this evening as the convener of the Congressional Progressive Caucus Special Order Hour. We had been planning today to talk about the different budget priorities between Democrats and Republicans, things I care about things I care a lot about, things I came to Congress excited to address. But we can't. We can't talk about those things today. Because once again, again, we are seeing our children slaughtered in their schools. Monday morning, I dropped two of my kids off at their elementary school actually went in and talked to their class for career day. Their teacher let them give me a hug and walk me back to the front before I got in the car and got on the plane and came to Washington. While I was in the air, the tragedy at the Covenant School in Nashville unfolded. It makes me absolutely sick to my stomach. Unlike in years past, from Evalde to Newtown, I haven't been able to hug my own kids yet since the tragedy in Nashville. But those parents in Nashville and in so many schools across this country will never be able to hug their babies again. We should be outraged. Outraged. Three nine-year-old children were ripped apart from their families by an assault-style weapon in their school, in the place we send them to learn, to grow, to be safe, and to feel safe. What's more outrageous than three nine-year-olds being slaughtered by an assault-style weapon in their school? It's the 13th school shooting this year. This year, in 2023, it's the 13th school shooting this year. It would be gut-wrenching and awful if it were 13 school shootings in 13 years. It's the 13th school shooting this year. Now, thank goodness for the courage, the bravery of the Nashville Police Department and the first responders who kept this tragedy from impacting more families. But it should have never happened in the first place. So what are we doing? What are we doing here to stop this, to protect our kids? Well, I heard one of my colleagues from the state where this happened say on the steps of this very building, there's nothing we can do. I can't accept that. As a policymaker, I can't accept that. As a parent, I can't accept that. And you can't say there's nothing we can do when you're willing to do nothing. I'm a person of faith. We raised our family in the church. I believe in the power of prayer. And I am glad that our thoughts and prayers are with the families in Nashville. But thoughts and prayers will never be enough. We must look at legislation and action so that there are no more school shootings and we don't have to comfort families who've lost their kids who simply went to school. And there are things we can and should do, common sense reforms that will keep our kids and our people safe. Let's start with universal background checks. 
90% of the American public wants us to have universal background checks. Where to buy a firearm in this country, you have to get a background check so that we know you're not in crisis or, or otherwise uneligible to buy a firearm. But instead, we see extremists in the other party willing to put gun manufacturers over people. We should ban assault weapons. These are weapons of war that have no place on our streets. Just today on the front page of the Washington Post, there's an expose on the AR-15 and it goes into the detail we have far too often sanitized about what an assault style rifle does to the body of a person and the body of a child. It has rendered kids unrecognizable in school shootings such as in Uvalde, Texas. When there was a product in the 1980s, lawn darts, that was dangerous for kids, we banned that. But we're not willing to ban these assault style rifles. That's because extremists right now want to put guns over kids. Let's talk about extreme risk protection orders. Measures that would actually keep people safe by temporarily removing a firearm from someone who's in crisis. We can't talk about gun violence in this country without recognizing that 60% of the gun deaths in America are death by suicide. But it could help other people as well. I have a constituent, Whitney Austin. She was a mom. She was a project manager at Fifth Third Bank. She traveled up to Cincinnati from Louisville, Kentucky to go to work. As she was walking into the office building, she was shot 12 times as part of what ended up being a mass shooting in Cincinnati. She'd never considered politics or gun policy before. Because Louisville, like so many places in this country, is a small place. We call it Louisville Village. She was friends with a person I went to high school with and before she got home from the hospital, she'd said, what can I do to help? I met her in her house the day she came home. Her hair was still wet from having washed the blood out of it. And we worked on legislation in the Kentucky General Assembly, legislation that I introduced with a Republican colleague from a rural part of our state that would keep people safe while respecting people's rights. But instead, we see again, a party willing to put guns over people. Let's talk about responsible gun ownership. Laws that would encourage safe storage. Look what happened a couple of weeks ago in Houston. A three-year-old shot and killed her four-year-old sister. A couple of days before that, a seven-year-old boy in Cleveland died from a suspected accidental self-inflicted gunshot wound. Just last month, a three-year-old boy in Orlando and a four-year-old boy in Nashville each shot themselves dead with guns they found. And the month before that, a six-year-old girl in Virginia accidentally shot and killed her teacher in Virginia. These are toddlers. But we see people willing to put guns over kids. We must try to do something. Bring these measures to a vote. Bring them to the floor. Let us vote on them. Tell the American people that you believe in guns over kids instead of universal background checks. But we've got to do something. We've had 38 mass shootings this month alone. So far, 130 in just the first 86 days of this year. More than 10,000 gun deaths and we're not even out of March. Bring these to a vote. Replace thoughts and prayers with legislation and action. And instead of legislation and action, what we're getting from Extreme MAGA Republicans are slogans, not solutions. Slogans like, guns make us safer. How can you say that when guns are now the leading cause of death for children in this country?
Will the measures I've mentioned end gun violence in America? No, of course not. But will they save lives? Yes, absolutely they will. And they will make our children safer. There's no doubt about it. And every day that we delay, every day that we delay, every day that we continue to refuse to take action, to put guns over people and guns over kids, we will almost certainly cause unnecessary death. I spent 10 years in the State Senate of Kentucky. During that time, I was in the minority. For 10 years, I worked to represent my constituents, but always find common ground. And that's what I came to Washington to do, to continue to try and find common ground. But we cannot compromise when it comes to our kids' lives. And to all of my colleagues in this body, neither should you. Today, I'm just another dad in America. Sad for the parents who won't have their kids with them this Easter. Sad for the parents who've lost their children to the senseless scourge of gun violence. Angry. Hurting. Looking to Congress to act. Pleading with my colleagues to bring these bills up for debate and to a vote, and to stop putting guns over kids. I now yield to my colleague, the gentlewoman from Pennsylvania. I rise today on behalf of the students, teachers, parents, and loved ones across Western PA who are still reeling from what we all thought was our worst fear come to life today. Just days after families in Nashville went through an unimaginable hell of losing their nine-year-old children because they had the audacity to attend a school in America, we received word about an active shooter situation back home in Pittsburgh. First at Central Catholic High School, then Oakland Catholic High School, and eventually a dozen of our schools across Pennsylvania. Imagine, you're a kid in Central Catholic. You've gone through the active shooter drills, and you saw the news on Monday and heard about every school shooting prior, and today you get a text that a gunman has entered your school. You're wondering if you'll be shot. Will it be your friends who are shot, your classmate, your teammate, your teacher? Can you protect them, or should you run? Do you have time to text your parents one last time? Imagine, you're a teacher hysterically crying to the dispatcher a minute after you heard the news. You realize the lock on your door is broken, so you start building barricades with desks and chairs. You ask your students to protect themselves with whatever means, by whatever means possible, from the metal rod in the closet to the acid chemicals in the physics lab. Imagine you're a parent, and you receive that phone call or text. Your heart stops, your world freezes, and your mind starts to race. Can you get to the school on time? Will you ever hug your baby again? Will they meet you at the reunification spot? Active shooters, hoaxes, uh, evacuations, active shooter drills. This is no way for our kids to live. This is disgraceful, and no to my colleagues across the aisle. This is not normal. Active shooters aren't normal. Shooting hoaxes aren't normal. The evacuations and the active shooting drills aren't normal. There's nothing about this that is normal. Guns are the leading cause of death for children between the ages of one and 18. Not car crashes, not illnesses or accidents, it's guns. Tomorrow, 
we will send our students back to those buildings where they experienced that immense trauma and fear. We'll expect them to pretend it's a normal day. We'll expect them to continue to learn and perform and to be attentive in the same classrooms that they were just barricaded in. Thankfully, unlike the students and the teachers and the families in Nashville or Michigan or Valde or Parkland or Sandy Hook or too many others who were gunned down to count they won't have to cry over their classmates' bodies or see their empty cheers uh, when they return to school. Because this time, it was just a hoax. Not, not a hoax. It was a swatting of children in schools in this era of heightened fear and vigilance around an epidemic of school and other mass shootings. So thankfully today, it wasn't dead children back home in Pittsburgh. It was just traumatized children. It doesn't have to be this way. And it wouldn't be this way. But it is this way because Republicans care more about guns than our kids or, or worshipers in a church or a synagogue or shoppers in a Walmart. Republicans want to control what books you read, they want to control what history you learn. They want to control how you identify, who you can love. They want to control our bodies. They want to control everything except that which could prevent mass preventable deaths of children and students and worshipers and shoppers in the only country on earth that this is a problem. They will not control the proliferation of guns in this country. And for those of you who say it's too political to ask that we put an end to bullet-written babies in body bags and traumatized kids doing active shooter drills in their elementary schools, I ask you to stop putting your politics over our children's lives. I yield back. Madam Speaker, the comments from my colleague from Pennsylvania make me think back to last spring after the Uvalde crisis. And I said every policymaker in the country should have had to drop their kids off at school the day after that shooting. It was all over the news and we didn't know whether to show our fourth graders, twins, our fourth graders, what was going on. But I wanted to talk to them about it and ask them if they were okay. Ask them if they felt scared. And my son looked at me and he said, it's okay, Dad. We practice active shooter drills in school. We'll be ready. No child should have to comfort their parents in that way. We should be working to protect our kids from this scourge. Instead, we see a party putting guns over our kids. I got an email after the Nashville shooting friend of mine from law school's dad. He wrote to me and he said, thank you for such a heartfelt, meaningful comment on the Nashville school tragedy. Too bad others don't have the guts to say what you did. I don't know if you heard from my son, but one of the three nine-year-olds who died was my granddaughter's friend and basketball teammate. Nine years old. Think about that. This is something simply impossible for me to process. And how do you explain it to a child? The boilerplate thoughts and prayers we still hear from those who refuse to do anything to stop the gun violence won't help my granddaughter understand why her friend had to die from a bullet. 
The gun advocates are all about their constitutional right to bear arms. Yet this grandfather wonders about a nine-year-old's constitutional right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, something which far too many of our children are being denied. It's just so sad. Thank you again for saying exactly what needs to be said again, again, and again until this craziness comes to an end. We control that, Madam Speaker. We have some say in whether this craziness comes to an end. From common sense, publicly supported reforms, universal background checks, banning assault weapons, extreme risk protection orders, making sure we have responsible gun ownership, making sure that guns are no longer the leading cause of death among our children. I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back.